<laughs> oh, good to see you. Good to be with you. <laughs> Today I have a story for you about two sisters. Let's call them April and May. They were both religious. They both loved to play, but April was more serious a couple of years older, and May was more fun-loving. When they were in their 30s, still fast friends. It happened that May got tricked by a guy who used alcohol and romance to deceive her into sharing some very personal information about April, which he proceeded to publish on social media. April was humiliated, and in her suffering, confided to May, who then confessed. At first, April was outraged, but then she quickly shifted gears. She knew they were sisters in God, and she understood the weaknesses that that manipulative guy had taken advantage of. So the two of them had a talk, and in that talk, they came to a mutual understanding about what had been wrong, about the breach of justice that had occurred. And then May went on in the days and weeks and months that followed to begin a 12-step program to really go to the depth of dealing with the growth that was hers to do. And she did a lot of reading in the area of psychology and self-help the best material she could find with the advice of others to help her in her progress of rehabilitation. And during that time, and especially during the very intense months that came in the step four process of the fearless moral inventory, April was a model of constancy, and she manifested fairness. And then patience and kindness as her friend went through the process that was hers to go through, and that she so willingly accepted. And then the time came when April did some things and said some things that communicated to May that she was renewing that strong friendship of trust. the mercy process among these friends had come to its personal conclusion. And all was smooth between these friends and strong.
And then late one afternoon, when April had been dealing with major frustration and was tired and hungry, she lashed out and spoke hurtfully to May and raised that old issue about May's betrayal. And even though that outburst was not truly hurtful to May in any way that called for much of a process, April took it seriously. April realized that she had not forgiven May as completely as she thought she had, that there was more work to do. And April mourned what she had done and took on a similar program of personal growth. with a couple of modifications. And one was that she didn't go full bore in a sustained way, drenching herself with recollections of her wrongdoing and the underlying causes. But rather as things came up for her to deal with, she took them one at a time and didn't go on a self-examination hunt looking for issues to face that might have been connected, as all things are connected in the human psyche in one way or another. And the other modification of her process was that she took a believe and rejoice attitude to what she was going through, knowing God, knowing that love and mercy and friendship that had enabled her to be such a friend to May years previously. She went to God and turned to him and experienced abundant forgiveness. And whenever anything fresh would come up, some fresh discovery, it was believe and rejoice that this growth process, step by step, stage by stage, was going to be triumphant in its outcome. And of course, May was the supportive, constant friend throughout April's processing. <laughs> and through all this, the two friends came to realize that now they could more deeply understand the teaching that they had grown up with as little girls. Happy are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. <laughs> and so for now, <laughs> whatever is going on in your life and in our world, always know that you are a divinely created, infinitely loved, spiritually indwelt, evolutionary, free will, son or daughter of the living God. <laughs> Good day.